Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, I'm very much looking into uh, design in the organization. I do not call it design management because I think design management has a very limited frame of, of um, reference uh, activities and, and, and content. And uh, to some degree, it's uh, along the lines of what Jürgen already said, which is uh, that it, it had for a long time, I and mean, when you look at the history of design management, it came out of the idea that there were some professional designers who knew that they had to be at the decision-making table. They knew that when they came into the game, into the businesses, into the, in, into the organizations, the decisions were already made and they could only work within a, a, a frame of, of you know, production or, or creation that, that they already knew was problematic because they saw as systems thinkers what the other problems were and if they could only come in more early, then they would be able to have a, a better contribution, uh, more abilities to change affect changes and innovation in organizations. Problem is that these designers were all taught exactly what you said too, put on your management suit and you know, act like a responsible adult manager. And um, to a certain degree, of course, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because we want to be adults and, and talk about matters of design uh, in, a, in an authoritative and, and educated and understandable way. But what design management has failed to do for, I would say, almost generations of design managers is to really look into what is designing? What makes designing? What, what does co designing contribute to organizations and to management and to managers? And uh, we're at this point now that we're very much internationally looking into that. And the interesting thing is that, um, especially I'm afraid to say in Germany, we're still very much behind um, in understanding aspects of that, in recognizing that that is a problem. Um, internationally, this research and practice is driven by business schools. So I usually show this slide here, I, 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 thought, I thought about bringing it, but I have this slide where you see the uniform of the designer, which is black, black turtleneck, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Black turtleneck, but of course designers never would wear uniforms, right? Mm -hmm. But black turtleneck, right, okay. So you usually have a black turtleneck, and then you see how it's over time evolving into a jacket, a business jacket, right? That is the early idea of design management, right? And then I put against it a business jacket, and guess what happens? Reverse turtleneck. It becomes a black turtleneck. That's exactly what's happening today, right? And so this is part of what we're talking about here when we talk about managing Creative and actually, I changed it already in my mind. Managing creative, creatively versus uh, create uh, versus. I'm so confused with creative management. Managing creatively, creative. It doesn't matter. You will find it doesn't matter. The point is, um, we're talking about design in the organization, and this is for some of you maybe a bit of a new topic because you're so used to talking about design management, about managing as designing, about uh, a manager and designer and so on and on. But really what it's about today is about a much broader concept that's resolved and, and detached from the actual product for the, for the start and goes back into processes, into activities. And that's what I will talk about for the moment and then maybe we can talk more later on. If you wanna, do I switch this? Yeah. Like just, like this. yeah. So here it is. Um, this is really the whole secret of all of it, right? You have activities. And by the way, if you noticed on, on Jürgen's last slide, he had moved away from management and so on, and it was already designing and managing, right? Because it's about practices, it's about activities. Here, you, haven't, you, ha you don't have to think about any particular product at this point, right? I'm just challenging you for now. Think about designing anything, anything. There is anything you touch, anything you want to create, anything you want to give gestalt in the German sense, you have to somehow involve changes. You cannot design without any kind of change. Of course, the change can be very different if you have you know, the challenge of redesigning this microphone, well, maybe you make it red or whatever, you know, so minor changes. 
but you still have to come up with some sort of change. The moment you change, you have to get into organizing again. Changing involves all kinds of things, ideas, materials, practices, processes, structures. Think of anything you can change as part of a design process, right? That's getting you to organizing. And once you get into organizing, you realize, holy cannoli, I cannot do this without managing. And guess what? Most designers are very good at managing because you have to deal with a whole lot under a whole lot of constraints, right? The interesting thing is when you think about managing as a starting point, and now we're talking about managing not as decision making, so in management there has been a, a big change, an understanding that in the current landscape of changes, of global challenges, of uncertainties, guess what? Managers very rarely, good managers, top managers, very rarely get the luxury of making a decision. You know what their challenge is at first? They have to create a framework to make a decision. They don't get the spreadsheet with A and B. They actually have to start thinking like, where are we going next? What kind of products are we making? What about our liability in terms of sustainability? It's a pretty blank sheet. And so they actually get engaged in questions of designing, which is the core of the Managing as Designing book, in essence. And then all of a sudden, we realize there are very many connections and interrelations between these different activities. And because of that, we also can see how we can utilize this for <coughs> different purposes, right? So the question is, for an organization, let's start with designing. What's the point of designing? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of the change? Is it something that should change the organization? Is it something that should change the relationship between people outside of the organization and inside? Do we take this as an opportunity to restructure and redesign internal processes? And if so, how do we manage this? What are the appropriate management processes? What are the supportive me me mechanisms of management to do that? Because we can very clearly see, it's, it's a very simple diagram, but we can very clearly see how, depending on what management approach you take, you can very much define and limit what changes. You can very much define and limit what the design outcome is. And you can also in include a serious reorganization, or you can take steps to maintain the status quo and to leave things the same way as they are. I switch. I also speak in metaphors <laughs> and images. This is a, a very great example of an organization. It's actually a beautiful organization. And if I were good in my mind, which I don't, I don't remember times and dates, but, but this, I took this picture in a fantastic library. It could be in Bonn, I don't remember. But it's a wonderful, wonderful old library. It's a very organized system. It has all the elements of every organization. For example, it has the element of people. You don't see them, but you know this is for people and this is by people. Someone in the organization created something, made it accessible for people, right? It has the element of structure, organizational structures. You have the boxes, the lines, the hierarchies, order, right? Physical, as well as implied in the organization of the registers. You have resources or materials and work. And uh, there's a purpose behind it, right? The question is, what's the purpose of this organization? Anyone want to volunteer? 
short time to, f to find what you're looking for. Yeah, but there is a little bit of a caveat in this kind of organization because it assumes you know how to look, right? It assumes you know which drawer to pull, which card to pull out. So the organization is very much organized in its own system around its own understanding and about the assumptions that it has or the expectations. The, the person who comes to the organization actually has to bring something to the organization, right? Mm -hmm. 